coming to the lowest place on the face of the earth, the Israeli Opera Festival is going to be held this coming June at Masada for the fourth time, featuring Giuseppe Verdi's La Traviata, directed by world-renowned director Michal Zanineski and his team. We attended the media preview of this major culture event in this year's Israeli calendar. Israeli Minister of Tourism Dr. Uzi Landau is extremely proud with the growing numbers of tourists to Israel under his leadership and hopes that future attractions like the opera and Masada will lure more tourists to come to visit the Holy Land. It's a special event for cultural tourism. For those who are going to combine uh, with this uh, backdrop of Masada that has its roots in thousands and thousands of years uh, of history, of a beautiful legacy, of a scenery which is unmatched. It is going to be, I believe, the fourth event in which uh, operas are uh, brought up and play there. And Israel is already becoming a major player on the international scene. We have had this year uh, three and a half million tourists. We would like to see a number of percentage uh, coming up, but I believe we might have another one to two additional percentages this year. The CEO of the Israeli opera, Hannah Munitz, loves to tell everyone how her team builds every year from scratch a little town in the middle of nowhere in order to create a spectacle of the opera on the top of Mount Besada. When we started this festival in Masada, we had to build a full city because we came to a desert. There was nothing. On the one hand, you had Masada, the mountain. On the other hand, you have the Dead Sea, the lowest place in Israel and the world, actually. And in the middle, between them, a desert with nothing in it. So we had to build roads to get to, to, uh, to start to, to do something there, to build uh, uh, water, to bring water pipes, electricity, uh, everything, to build a tribune for seven. 1,500 uh, seats every night. And the stage, the stage is 68 meters wide. The opening is 68 meters. So uh, it's something that we had to build from scratch. We have 2,500 people working on this project uh, for several months every year, uh, building the area. And, and then in the end, we have 700 people performing on stage, uh, including uh, singers, dancers, uh, and all orchestra and a chorus, uh, all of that is in order to make this place, this uh, the Negev, south of Israel, thrive and bring in uh, tourists to, to give life to this magnificent, heroic place of Masada. Every year it brings 80 million shekels into the economy in Israel, mainly from uh, hotels, uh, buses, uh, uh, taxis, etc., uh, etc., et and uh, so it's a project that not only brings culture to the, this country, but also uh, uh, improves the economy here. Idan Rachel, who has long accepted the fact that his musical project has become the world ambassador of Israeli music, will also perform during the Masada spectacle with 92 of his band members on stage. It's a very uh, unique band for those of the uh, viewers who are not familiar with the Dan Reichel project. It's, um, it's a musical project that uh, I've recorded back home in Kfar Saba. Over 95 musicians and singers, the youngest member in the project is 16 and the, elder, the young spirits are uh, 83 and 91 years old. Uh, over 95 musicians from uh, different places around the world. We are not touring 95 uh, musicians and singers, but we have on stage uh, always between 14 to 18 amazing uh, musicians and singers very versatile from uh, from acoustic uh, influence to uh, electric influence from uh, singers from Tel Aviv and singers that were born in the refugees camps of Sudan or Addis Ababa Ethiopia, guitar player from Morocco or percussion player from Rio de Janeiro. So it's a very, um, it's, I think that this band uh, reflects the multi-ethnic uh, sounds that you can find here. As a world music artist, you know, we, we're doing Israeli music, but uh, world music uh, artists have the privilege to score or to write the soundtrack of the place that they came from. If people listen to my music around the world and take it as the soundtrack of Israel in the past decade, for me it's the biggest compliment. Even before
for the official launch of the event, over 11,000 tickets have already been sold, over half of them to what is classified as cultural tourists who plan to come to Israel, especially for this festival. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson at the Israeli Opera House in Tel Aviv.